Welcome to Channel 9. Um, my name is Tomáš Petříček and in this talk I'll show you something about how F# -sharp learned to stop worrying and love the data. Um, so many of you have heard of F# -sharp type providers, which is a mechanism for accessing data in the new version of F# -sharp. and in this talk I'll, I'll show you a various uses of the concept. So we'll cover topics ranging from, from data access to language interoperability and really the, the main the main idea, the main point of the talk is how you can easily access data with F# -sharp. Um, So um, my name is Tomáš Petříček. I am the author of Real World Functional Programming, which is an F# -sharp tutorial. I'm currently working on um, F# -sharp Deep Dives, which is a book written not by me but by various industry experts from the F# -sharp community. Um, so. That's a, that's a really good place where you can learn about different users and different uses of F# -sharp. and I'm also doing F# -sharp trainings um, in London and in New York. Um, one thing I want to say before we start is I want to introduce you to the F# -sharp Software Foundation, which is a new initiative um, which is supported by Microsoft and the open source community around F# -sharp, as well as various other commercial users. Um, so this is the place where you can, you, you can go join the F# -sharp community, learn about other various interesting projects, learn about various uh, commercial, commercial libraries for F# -sharp and so on. Um, okay, so let's get to the, to the uh, main topic of the talk and that's data. Um, as, you, as you definitely know, data is everywhere and most of the applications these days are really focused on data. So accessing data in your application is the key question. Now, there's more data than you can imagine. Um, I'll start by looking at the World Bank, which is an international organization um, that collects data about various countries. And um, the interesting fact is that they have something around 8,000 indicators about all countries in the world. So accessing that amount of data is really, really hard and searching that amount of data is difficult as well. Um, when you use the, the web browser today to search for something on the internet, you usually get um, very useful hints. The, the search engines will tell you uh, oh, you're probably searching for this, and it can even tell you what's the what's the value you want to know. So, but when you're when you're programming, you don't get the same feeling. Um, when you when you start programming, you're accessing data. You have to look for the documentation to find what's the API you want to call, and so on. Um, so, when I want to access data, I want to do something like this. Um, I want to have a type that represents the World Bank and when I hit dot, I want to get an IntelliSense that will tell me what my options are. And um, this is exactly what you get with F-sharp type providers. So um, I'll start by uh, showing type providers in, in Try F-sharp, um, which is... So Try F-sharp is a uh, web-based development environment, web-based tool where you can start learning F# -sharp and um, you can write various pieces of F# -sharp code, test them in in your web browser. Um, so what I'll what I'll be doing now is that I'll use the World Bank type provider in Try F# -sharp running in my browser, and um, I'll show you how we can access some data. The site also has various tutorials, so you can use it to learn about the language and about various uh, problems that people solve with F# -sharp. Um, and you can also create new files and share them. So this is a sample which I created earlier, and so far this is just loading um, the the type provider, which looks like a normal .NET assembly. Um, there's actually uh, something interesting going on behind the scenes, so we'll see that in a minute. Um, the website has uh, IntelliSense as well, so when I say World Bank dot, I get a completion as usual, and 
Um, I can run the code by selecting it and hitting Control Enter. And now when I click data, um, it offers me to go through the different countries. And that's where the interesting bit happens. You can see that the intelligence list comes with all the countries that the World Bank knows about. So I can choose a country and it's a bit like this search engine experience. And when I pick a country, I get the name and so on. And I also get indicators um, where I can access the different information that World Bank stores about the countries. So for example, um, let's look at the school enrollment in universities. And if I select this piece of code and run it, it connects to the, to the World Bank and uh, gets the current data. So it gives me a list um, of different years and um, university enrollment. And I can easily visualize the data and draw a line chart um, showing how the university enrollment changes. Uh, now, I think the, the important point is that when you start using this, you really see the different uh, possibilities for what kind of applications you can do uh, or what kind of data you can, you can get. Or when you start reading newspapers, you can easily see that you can, you can check the facts. Um, so you can make sure that the politicians aren't lying to you. Um, so for example, what we can very easily do in this, in this case is that we can take uh, two different data sets, uh, school enrollment for, for male and female students, and uh, we can use another uh, functions for working with charts to combine these two data sets and display um, just a single chart that shows the two different values and how they change. Um, so let me show you one more, one more example um, which I prepared earlier. So in this sample, um, we actually get some data and do some, do some computations over the data, which is something that F# -sharp is really, really good at. Um, so I'll just run the code we wrote earlier, and now I can get, uh, now I can get uh, multiple different countries. I can, I can store them in a list. Uh, you could get them dynamically as well if you're interested in, in one specific region, for example. And then what we want to do is that we want to calculate the, the, the average school enrollment rate uh, for these countries. And um, F# -sharp is, is really good at writing calculations that process data. Um, it's one of the areas where, where the language really, really works well. Um, so what we are doing in this, in this uh, example is that we get for every country um, we get the school enrollment data, and then we simply concatenate all the values. So if I run this, I'll get a single list which contains, uh, for every year, it contains a couple of values from different countries, and then we can group the data by the year, meaning that we'll get for every, every year uh, all the different values from, from different countries. And finally, uh, we want to do a bit of, bit of processing because if there's data available only for a single country, um, it would, uh, it would uh, skew the, the chart badly. So we say um, if there's, if there's uh, only two data points missing, then, we, then we, we are okay. Otherwise, we'll skip this point. And for every point, we take average over the different countries. So. This gives us uh, a single chart that shows the, the average over different countries. And I think this sample really shows something where f -sharp works extremely well. You get the data from possibly different data sources. Um, you do some processing to compare, to, get, to extract the, the information you're interested in and visualize that easily all in your, all in your web browser. Uh, now, I started by doing this in a, in a web browser, but you can, um, 
very easily take the code and uh, switch over to Visual Studio and continue developing um, some, some more complex applications. So um, I'll start by creating a new f -sharp tutorial project and I'll uh, place it somewhere on my, on my hard drive. Uh, and um, so the tutorial project includes some examples uh, of using f -sharp. We don't We don't need that. And um, if I want to use the, the type provider uh, mechanism, I can reference uh, some of the standard type providers that are, are shipped with f -sharp. Um, The World Bank one is actually a type provider that's maintained by the f -sharp community. So if I get uh, from, from NuGet packages, if I get the f -sharp data project, um, then I'll get the, the, the World Bank type provider, which I was just using in the, in the web um, interface. So I can pretty much uh, copy most of the code. Um, I'll just need to start by referencing the, the DLL, uh, which I just downloaded. So I'll need a .NET 4 version of f .dll. Um, so when I, when I load the type provider, the type provider is actually extension to the compiler. So for security reasons, I need to explicitly enable it. Um, and after loading the type provider, I'll also want to use um, a charting, charting library. Um, and there's a, there's a desktop version of the charting library that we were using in, in tri -F sharp So once I, I load this, um, I'm good to go, and um, I can open uh, a namespace f -sharp data where the type provider lives, and I can, um, just like previously, use the World Bank data, uh, get some context representing connection to the service, and um, then I can, um, I can just uh, copy the code which I wrote, wrote just now. So, um, and everything will work in uh, my in my Visual Studio. Um, so let me just run the calculation again. Um, oh, I forgot to include a namespace for the charting library. Um, so that's done, and now I can run the code and get the get the chart. Now, one thing you might want to do. Uh, when you when you switch to the Visual Studio version, is that um, currently when we are when we are downloading the files, we are actually downloading them uh, one by one. We are downloading them country by country. So we might want to do that uh, in in parallel. Um, and to do that, I can actually show you um, one more interesting feature of type providers, which is that. Some of, the, some of the type providers can take parameters. So when, you, when you're importing the data, you can specify which source you want to include, or uh, you can say um, how you want to see the data. So if I, if I set this, this asynchronous parameter, then suddenly uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get um, all the data accessible, but with asynchronous interface. Uh, so now this, this piece of code is still the same, but if I look at the school enrollment data, now you can see uh, right here that it's returning an asynchronous computation. And if I have a list of asynchronous computations, then I can use the f -sharp library to say run this in parallel or compose this into a single asynchronous computation that will run in parallel and then run the computation uh, by spawning multiple, multiple threads or multiple tasks and, and do it. Um, in this sample, um, the, the World Bank uh, website is actually limiting the, the amount of parallelism, but you can, you can see the idea that it's very easy to take some code, 
uh, make it asynchronous and uh, run it in Visual Studio as well. So to summarize uh, this example, um, I showed you the, the Try F Sharp website, which is really a nice place where you can start playing with F Sharp, explore uh, various type providers for accessing data, and it hosts a number of really good tutorials. And we've been using the F Sharp data library for accessing data from the World Bank. Um, there's actually quite a few other features in the library. Um, we'll, we'll see some of them in a minute. Now, um, another interesting thing we can do with F Sharp is um, that F Sharp has really good metaprogramming capabilities. And there's a number of projects that let you take your F Sharp code and translate it to JavaScript and run it as a pure HTML5 uh, web application. So let me just show you another example of, of doing this. And um, I have a, a sample project which you can, you can download from the Channel 9 uh, website. And um, at the moment, I started with a really simple stop that doesn't do much. So um, what you can see here is that I'm, I'm defining a program. Uh, I'm using some, some uh, namespaces. I'm using the FunScript library. And that library comes with a, an F-sharp type provider for, interoperate, for interoperation with uh, TypeScript uh, library mappings. So what's happening here is that I'm, I'm importing the TypeScript definition for the standard JavaScript library, and I get a fully typed uh, view of the data, of the, of the API. So you can see that in the, in the lib type, I have all the usual JavaScript uh, JavaScript functions, uh, all the usual, usual JavaScript API, and all the uh, types imported. So if I say uh, hello world um, and call lib.alert and run the program, then uh, what's happening right now is that the, the um, F Sharp library, the, the F Sharp program, got compiled. Um, it got executed, and when it, when it executes, it looks at the code and translates the code to JavaScript, and it also starts a simple web server. Uh, you could change it to just emit JS file and import, it, import the file yourself. Um, I, I'm using this, this um, la launcher, which is really easy way to start or test your, test your code. So you can see that um, the alert uh, call in F Sharp got translated to Hello World Alert in, in JavaScript. Now we can actually do a lot more interesting things. Um, for example, we can uh, take the, the F Sharp code we just wrote uh, to work with the World Bank data. Um, so let me just copy. Uh, this piece of code, which references the F -sharp, F Sharp data library. And um, instead of using uh, the standard uh, JavaScript libraries, we will be using, using jQuery. So I have a um, snippet that references uh, the jQuery library. And then we uh, reference the World Bank type provider, as, as in the previous example. And in our main function, uh, we want to uh, generate a, a UI that will let us click on the different uh, click on the different on the different countries and compare the selected countries. Um, so let me copy one more one more snippet, and um, I'll put this in a render function. And what this snippet does is that uh, it builds, uh, it uses the high charts uh, charting library, and it creates, at the moment, it just creates some sample data and shows a chart with the data. Um, if I was writing this from scratch, I would get IntelliSense when, when accessing the, the high charts library, because there's type mapping for it. So we can see 
the, the sample artificially created data as a chart. And now we want to do something more interesting. And uh, we actually want to get some data from the World Bank. So to do that, um, because we, we will be calling, we will be doing some HTTP requests. Um, and that has to be asynchronous in JavaScript. So we can uh, use the F-sharp asynchronous programming model even when writing JavaScript applications. Um, so I'll just wrap the render function in, uh, in, in, JavaScript, um, in the async block. And uh, when we want to, want to run it, uh, I'll use a function that uh, starts the function. I'll, I'll use start immediate, which means start the asynchronous computation on the current thread. In JavaScript, there's, there's only a single thread normally. Um, and run the piece of code until there is some asynchronous operation. Uh, so let's, let's um, get the data, which will be our asynchronous operation. Now, um, if I want to do an asynchronous operation inside the async block, I have to use this let bank uh, construct, which says do the operation on the right hand side, and whenever it finishes, run the rest of the workflow. Um, so what we want to do is that we actually want to iterate over all the countries which we have in our countries uh, list. I'll just turn this into a a function which returns an array instead of F sharp list because that's going to be more efficient. And now we can iterate over all the countries. And for every, for every country, we'll, uh, for every country, we'll get the school enrollment indicator. So let me just pick the one for university enrollment. And um, now we need to transform the data into the format that the charting library expects. So I have a, have a snippet for that already, because we need to turn uh, the, the sequence into uh, an array of arrays, which is what the library expects. Um, and uh, we want to set the name for this uh, chart line to the name of the country, uh, which I can get from the country field as well. So that's all provided by the type provider. And um, if I run it now, I would get a list or a single chart with all the countries. So let me add uh, one, more, one more feature. Um, just before we start, Doing the, the, doing the rendering at the beginning of the main function, um, we can write a piece of code to go over all the countries. And for every country, we generate an input checkbox, which the user can tick if they, if they want to see the data. So now this piece of code is just using uh, the, the jQuery uh, library. Um, you can see that when I... Uh, use some of the jQuery objects, I get, again, an IntelliSense, which is generated based on the um, type specification for jQuery. So this builds uh, a list of, a list of uh, checkboxes. And um, when we are rendering, we can actually iterate over the, the checkboxes. And we can check if the, if the checkbox is checked. Um, so the info's value contains uh, country and the, the checkbox HTML element. And we can say if check, and again, we get the IntelliSense uh, for, for jQuery API. And we can ask if the checkbox is checked. And if that's the case, then we want to, want to add the country. Now, the jQuery API, uh, can be untyped in various places. So we just need to cast this to, to Boolean to make the code work. Um, and I think we are, we are ready to run the sample now. So again, uh, when we run it, it will compile the F-sharp code to JavaScript. 
and it will replace all the World Bank type provider calls um, with uh, with an actual um, with an actual JavaScript that does the communication over the REST API. Now, I actually forgot one thing in the sample uh, because we are only calling the render function uh, initially when the program starts. But what we actually want to do is that we want to call it whenever the user clicks on the checkbox. Uh, so we need to add uh, one, more, one more piece of code uh, to iterate over all the checkboxes and set the click handler to uh, whenever, whenever you click on a checkbox, we want to run the render function to update the current view of the, of the chart. So when the code uh, runs, we'll get a pure JavaScript HTML5 website. And when we click on different countries, it will get the data for the different countries uh, and uh, draw a chart using uh, standard HTML5 charting technology. So that's um, F Sharp and Type Providers running uh, as a HTML application. Now um, I've been I've been using uh, FunScript, which is an open source uh, implementation of the F Sharp to JavaScript translation. Um, so that's that's available on on GitHub. Um, there's quite a few other samples as well. Um, there's a lot more to web programming in F Sharp. Um, there's a very interesting project called WebSharper, um, which also lets you write F Sharp and run it as a JavaScript, but it has uh, lots of different libraries. Um, and uh, you, can, you can find a more detailed list of various web programming stacks for F Sharp on the fsharp.org website if you're interested. So, um, in the sample so far, we've been using one specific uh, data source. We've been using the World Bank, and um, that's a very interesting data set. So there's a special type provider specifically for accessing the World Bank. Um, but very often, you just want to access some, um, some other REST API or uh, get data from some other source, which is what, what you're interested in. Um, now, REST. Um, as you as you probably know, it's not really uh, a specific single uh, technology or or single format. Um, it's more of a of a style of a software architecture, and there are some common patterns that people use on the web. Um, so many many web APIs use. Um, the URL-based uh, requests, HTTP requests, and communicate using JSON or, or XML. So if we want to access that kind of data, um, we can't really write a type provider for every single, every single uh, web API that's out there. So what we need instead is something that's uh, more, more general purpose. And, um, that's something I'm, I'm going to show you in the next example. So this time, we'll use a type provider that lets us work with any JSON documents. So I'll start um, in, I'll start in F -sharp Interactive again, um, just to show you how we can, how we can use the, use the uh, type provider. And I'll be using um, the F# -sharp data library again. So we reference F# -sharp data, um, and one other thing that's that's there aside from the World Bank type provider is a type provider for um, processing JSON documents. Um, it also has a couple of helper functions for making HTTP requests. Um, so uh, the the sample which I want to show you is how to call the movie database API. Um, the, the, the movie database has some documentation on the website. Um, so for instance, uh, what we want to do is that we want to search uh, for movies. And the documentation tells us, if you want to do this, 
you have to request this specific URL. So I'll copy the, the root uh, URL which we need to access. And then to get uh, to search for movies, we need to specify this uh, relative link. Okay, so this will this will search for a movie, and it also tells us to use uh, the the query parameter. So if we say query and let's say uh, Batman, then uh, this will be the URL to call for for searching, and we also need to specify the API key, uh, which I already already have here. So this is the URL we want to get, and I can do that using the http.request function, which is in the F-sharp data library. Uh, so there's my URL, and um, I actually need to specify a header as well, um, because if we look at the documentation, it says when we are sending the request, we have to specify that accept header is application.json. Um, so the, the http.request function makes this a bit easier. And when we run the call, um, it uh, runs the request and we get some, some JSON, JSON data back. So what can we do with the JSON data? Well, uh, we can either uh, copy it from, from F-Sharp Interactive. So let me just copy it. It's fairly long. Um, we can uh, try looking at the, at the structure, or we could try looking at the documentation, which says this is roughly how the, how the structure of the JSON file looks like. Um, now, what I'm going to do instead uh, is that I'll just save this uh, JSON, JSON data, which I got from my, from my sample uh, request, and I'll save it uh, into the directory where I have my, my script file. So I'll call it movie data.json. And uh, now what I can do is that I can use uh, a type provider. Uh, I can use the JSON type provider and I can give it the sample file um, as an input. And what the type provider does is that it looks at the sample input and it infers the types from the, from the sample input. You could give it multiple files as well if you have multiple samples. But for our example, it's actually, it's actually sufficient to give it one representative sample. And now we can parse the data and uh, we get some search results back. Um, it's, still, it's still represented as, as JSON under the cover, but uh, when I use this search results value, um, it has a type uh, automatically generated by the type provider, which represents the data set. So we can uh, see that there's a page field, um, there's total results, these are um, as you can see, these are inferred to be of type integer because the sample contains just numbers. Um, results um, is actually inferred to be an array or a collection of some entities. So we can iterate over the result. And uh, when we iterate over the result, the result is again statically typed value um, and it has fields like popularity, which is a decimal, it has title, um, which is a string, release date is inferred to be uh, a choice type, which means that it may be a date time or it may be something else. In this case, it could be missing. So let's just print uh, for example, let's just print the titles from the data set. And you can see we got uh, the different titles of the movies in our F-Sharp Interactive. So um, 
In this example, we looked a different, we, we used a different kind of type provider um, because it's not specific for single API. It's very general provider which can work with any JSON data, provided you give it some um, example, um, example and it infers the, the, the type, the structure from the example. Uh, the F# -sharp data library has different uh, type providers which are like that for accessing XML data, uh, JSON and CSV files. Um, so that's, that's um, another very useful useful thing you can get from F# -sharp type providers. Um, now um, when we are when we are calling REST API, uh, it's actually uh, often the case that the API follows similar patterns. Uh, so if you uh, had some documentation or, or some schema for your REST web service, then uh, you could almost write a type provider uh, which lets you, uh, lets you access any REST API and gives you uh, some, some static uh, type safety for, for that API. Um, now, when I, when, I, uh, you, when I wrote the sample for accessing the movie database, I was using a service called apiary.io. Um, and this, this, is a, this is a service that lets you document your, your REST API. Um, it has some additional tools like testing or it generates a, a mock proxy based on your, on your specification, so you can just draft your, your API specification um, and start coding against the, the proxy without actually implementing your, your full API. Um, so that's a that's very useful, useful project, but interestingly, what they let you do is that they also let you access programmatically this, this specification. Um, so what we can do in F# -sharp is that we can call apiary.io, uh, get their specification for the API, and from that specification, um, we can we can infer what does the REST API for for that specific website? What does it look like? So that's the next thing I want to demonstrate. Um, now this this type provider is. Um, located under fsharp.data.experimental because it still has rough edges, but I think it's very interesting direction. Um, so that's something I wanted to definitely show you. And uh, uh, there's, again, an apiary type provider. Uh, so I'll call this movie db. Um, I'm defining a type uh, which represents the type that's, that's generated for a specific API. And this takes uh, a single static parameter, which is the, the name of the, of the um, documentation on the apiary IO website. So I just had to copy, copy this, this bit. Um, now, the type provider uh, only looks at the specification from apiary.io. Um, and when I actually want to call something, I need to create a new instance of this movie DB type and give it the, the actual uh, location, the, the root, where, uh, where the, uh, the web service lives. So um, if I run this piece of code, um, it actually downloads the specification from the, uh, from, from the apiary.io website um, it tries to do some matching of common patterns and um, before we can call it we also need to uh, we also need to specify the API key um, so the way to do this in this example is that on the generated type uh, we can say um, at query param and the name of the param is API key and the value I just copied from the other file. So once we do that, all the calls will have this additional parameter. And now, um, if you look at what's, what's generated there, uh, you can see that we have uh, 
a few, a few uh, common, common methods that will be available for every API, but then we have some specific things for the movie database, like we can uh, get information about keywords, um, about some lists, movies, uh, people, and we can also search. So if I look under the, the search entity, it offers me a various, various things we can search for. So let's search for person, for example. Uh, and now, um, when we are searching, um, it's not actually possible to infer uh, all the structure from the, from the documentation. So when we want to pass an additional query parameter, uh, we can say uh, query equals and specify the parameters there. So before we, before we run the sample, um, the root URL should actually be just the, just the root server. So I'll need to update this bit. And when I do that, I can finally uh, run, my, run my query, search for, for different uh, people in movies. And again, um, it looked at the, um, it actually looked at the JSON sample, which uh, is part of the documentation on the Apiary IO website, and inferred a nice type from that. So if we go to results, you can see that this is a collection, an array. Uh, so we can s iterate over all the people, and uh, every person has the usual properties, like name, for example. So we can print that name. Uh, we can print ID as well. Uh, ID is inferred to be int because it's available for all the people, and it's always a number. So if we print it, then uh, we get a nice, nice list of various people in the movie industry with a name containing Craig. Um, or we can, uh, if, we are, if we are interested in some specific data, then we can get data about a person and specify the ID of the person. So this gives us uh, detailed information about Daniel Craig. Uh, and we can, for example, uh, find, find uh, let's say, where he's, where he's from. So Daniel Craig was apparently uh, born in Chester. So to summarize, um, what, I, what I used in this sample uh, is a type provider that looks at some specification of the REST API, and it, it looks for, for common patterns in the API, like specifying movie slash and ID uh, to get a movie, movie summary and so on. And based on that documentation or based on that specification, it gives you a nice type safe uh, typed uh, API, which you can use from F -sharp, uh, to access uh, any REST service which has this documentation. Now, um, there's probably a lot of different competing standards for, uh, for accessing, for specifying REST APIs. And I think writing, writing type providers for, for that is a really interesting project. Um, so, uh, so far I was doing that uh, just in, in F Sharp Interactive, but the API type provider uh, supports translation to JavaScript as well. So uh, let me show you just one, just one, uh, one more web programming example where we'll use the um, API type provider to uh, search the, the movie database and we'll, we'll run the whole thing as a uh, plain JavaScript application. So I already have most of the code, uh, most of the code here. Um, the file starts with a couple of lines that initialize connection to the API type provider, uh, import some, some helpers for writing jQuery code. And then in my main function, uh, I'm currently just defining a search function 
which uh, whenever we call it with a search term, it clears the results um, HTML element on the page and it creates a new div element saying there were no results. So uh, let me run it just to see what we actually want to get. Um, so we want to get a website where when we say search for uh, Batman, we'll get some data in the found movies. Um, at the moment, we, we don't have any uh, data. We, we are not really connected to the movie database yet. So it just returns nothing. Uh, but let's, let's fill in the, the missing, missing pieces. Uh, so what we need to do, uh, what we need to do first, um, or let me actually, let me actually start by, by doing some live coding again. Um, so the, the API type provider, which we already, already have, uh, um, I'll again, I can again copy a few, few lines of code from the, from the previous, uh, interactive, interactive sample. So in the main function, we'll need to create a connection to the movie database. We'll need to provide the API key. And then we can uh, call various functions of the, of the data uh, object or the, the generated type. So we can search for, uh, we can search for, uh, for a movie. Now, um, in JavaScript, we can only do that asynchronously because we are, we are not allowed to write blocking code. So again, we, we had the same problem with the World Bank. Uh, but because we're in F-sharp, which has full support for asynchronous programming, uh, we can just use the F-sharp asynchronous programming model. Um, so if I use an asynchronous version of the search method, uh, then uh, uh, let me specify the, the query search parameter. Okay, so that's what we are searching for. And um, this result is, again, uh, some asynchronous computation. If you were doing this in, in JavaScript or in, in TypeScript, uh, where you don't have the async programming model, you would have to specify the rest of the code as a callback um, and use the, the normal uh, Lambda function-based uh, callback, callback style. Uh, in F sharp, we can just mark the function as async. So that's my uh, async search function. Uh, when we call it, we have to do that asynchronously. So we'll say async.start immediate. And now we can call the, the search function asynchronously. And what we get back is just a value, just an entity. Uh, and we can iterate over the results just what, like we did in the previous case. And for every result, um, let's generate an H3 element which will show the uh, name of the movie. Uh, I actually called it movies, but that's fine. Um, and we want to show the title. So, um, you can actually see when I, when I do a typo in my, in my code, if I, for example, spell title incorrectly, I get a full uh, checking because the types are, are there, they're, they're fully inferred, um, and they're checked just like normal F-sharp code or, or just like normal C-sharp code if you're used to static typing. So if we run the sample again, uh, when we, uh, when we uh, search for some movie, uh, we'll, we'll get back uh, a list of the movie titles. Uh, in this example, uh, the, the compilation of the, of the program is actually kind of complicated because it needs to look at the whole apiary documentation um, and figure out what's the right structure. Uh, so if we search, for example, for Star Wars, 
then you get a list of all the Star Wars movies. So that's looking, that's looking good. Um, and let me just fill in, uh, fill in some more, uh, some more snippets to make the sample a bit more interesting. So I added a function uh, which uh, shows some details about a single movie when we click on it to see to see more information. So what this does is that it asynchronously gets movie details, uh, fills in title overview, uh, creates a, a link to the image, and then it gets all the casts for the movie, so we'll see all the actors and so on. We're doing some um, data processing as well using normal F-sharp array functions to sort the data. And uh, when we want to, to generate the movie information, uh, we'll actually use jQuery to build a couple of more elements. Uh, so what's happening here is that we generate uh, a link to show the movie details. Um, we'll generate some list with detailed information about the movie and we, we add it to the uh, results, results diff. Now, uh, one last thing I can show you in this example uh, is that um, what I need to add, um, when the user clicks on this link, we want to show the movie details. So, um, I need to add a handler for, for a click, and again, the, the type of the jQuery API is inferred, um, or it's imported from the, from the TypeScript specification. So, click is a normal uh, method in F Sharp, and I can call it, and I can say uh, call the show details function. So, let's call show details function with item.id as the argument, and uh, we need to start the asynchronous computation. So, uh, that's all I need to write to uh, get a fully working, uh, fully working website that connects to the, world, to the movie database, uh, uses the movie database REST API, uh, hand, uh, processes, parses the incoming JSON, and shows it to the user in uh, a fairly nice way. So let's look at the list of James Bond movies. Uh, we get a list. Uh, when you click on uh, a favorite James Bond movie, you get uh, some movie details with the, uh, with the description and all the cast and so on. So I could write this uh, in a fully statically typed way, uh, but I, I used uh, quite a few different, uh, different data sources or, or uh, untyped, untyped uh, APIs. And the type provider mechanism is, is really powerful and it makes it possible to uh, import the structure from an external data source or infer the data types from, from samples. Uh, so to summarize, uh, we looked at, um, throughout, throughout the, the talk, I actually used four different type providers and all of them uh, are written by the F -sharp community. They live in the F -sharp .data library and it really shows the unexpected power of the mechanism because I think uh, many of these examples are something that the F -sharp team didn't really expect when they, when they designed the feature. Um, and so this is really an interesting area where you can play with various interesting ideas. Um, so we used the, the, the JSON type provider, which is an example of a type provider which works for any data, fo any data file and it infers the structure. So that's, that's one that's very universal. Um, there's, there's similar providers for XML or CSV. You can use it to work with uh, open government data or 
uh, lots of data sources that are available on the web these days. Um, we also used a, a fairly specific type provider, the, the World Bank type provider, which is really tuned to work against one specific API, which um, is really an interesting data source. So that's why um, I think it deserves a specific type provider. And if you, if you have any other data source of uh, interesting data, you can write a type provider uh, for example, for the for the finance um, uh, finance uh, data to get stock prices in a type safe way for different countries. Uh, the next thing we used is the TypeScript provider, which is of quite different kind because it doesn't really access data. It just lets us integrate with other other programming languages, and this integration is really really powerful and interesting feature as well. Um, there's, there's various projects um, in the F-sharp world that, for example, let you call R, the, the statistics language, from F-sharp in a typed way uh, by looking at the, at the structure of R functions and giving you a typed type access. Um, and finally, I, I showed the apiary type provider, which is um, accessing some fairly complex schema description for, for REST APIs and makes that available as F-sharp functions. So if you want to learn more about F-sharp and type providers, then uh, definitely check out the Try F-sharp org website, which um, has many of, the, many of the type providers which I was using. You can get the World Bank data, you can get data from uh, other, other um, online sources. Uh, so that's that's very interesting uh, page, which also has quite detailed introduction to F-sharp and tutorials if you're, if you're not familiar with it yet. Um, you can also join an increasing list of various user groups. Uh, there's, there's a list of the user groups available on fsharp.org. Uh, you can find more information about F-sharp on fsharp.org as well. And uh, finally, if you, if you want to learn more, um, we are often offering trainings and we are running tutorials on F-sharp in London and New York. Thank you. Mm -hmm.